So error handling is one of the things that are neglected the most by developers. In this video, we're going to talk about error handling and I'm going to present a simple way of implementing it. That doesn't mean that other ways are wrong. This is just one way of doing things. If that doesn't work for your project, that's fine. Just try to improve it. Maybe you can change it, improve it, and then you can use it in your own project. So let's do it. So we have a simple e-commerce application. And as you can see, we have a list of product. If we turn on the airplane mode and then we try again to open the app, then this is going to crash because there is no error handling implemented. The app's crashing. And what we're going to do is that we're going to implement error handling for the product list screen. So let's do it. So the first thing we want to do is that we want to implement the error handling for our repository that is fetching those products. So I know that it's here in the product repository and then in the implementation is using retrofit. And here, as you can see, get product list is returning a list of product. So whenever there is an exception here, then this exception is thrown and nobody's getting that exception, nobody's catching that exception, and therefore the app crashes. Let's start by creating a way to return an error. Here, we have to be able to return an error as well, right? So you're, you're trying to get a list of products, but what happens if that fails? You have to somehow return either success or an error. And in the case of error, you have to show what is the exception that happened. Ideally, you would have different errors for each layer of your architecture. But here, let's keep it simple. Let's create one uh, simple way of error handling. So let's do it. So here in the, the package where I have the, the implementation of my API, I'm going to create a new class that is called result. So result is going to be what the APIs are going to return. So it doesn't return a list of product. It returns a result. And this result could be two things. It could either be a success or an error. So data class error. And here we're going to have an exception. So here we have the error and now we need a success. So, so success. And here I need to return a generic type of data because imagine right now you're trying to get a list of product, but maybe you want to get a product. So you want to reuse this, right? So we cannot create one error handling for every new API call. So let's use a generic name. Let's call it data. Quick pause. Have you liked the video? No, it's free. Go ahead, do it. Yeah, now. And also the type, it also has to be generic. We cannot define a specific type that is going to be always returned. Like I cannot say this is going to be a list of product because, well, maybe you're getting a list of, I don't know, uh, a list of discounts or a list of uh, coupons or a wish list. I don't know. So again, this has also to be generic. Okay. Um, but if we want to use generic, we also have to define here. So out of T and also here. And here in case of error, this is going to be nothing. And in case of success, this is going to be uh, the type T. Okay, so I hope this part is clear. We have a sealed class called result, and this result is going to either be a success or an error. If it's an error, I'm going to have an exception. And if it's a success, I will have some kind of data. So now let's use that in our repository. And here we're going to say, okay, instead of returning a list of product, it's going to be a result and this result the type of this result is a list of product now let's go to our implementation and here we have to fix it so it's a result of this of product okay so now we have to actually handle the error right so because here is where the, the error actually occurs so i have to do a try catch here so i'm gonna try to do this api call 
And if that fails, if that fails, then I have to return an error state. So I'm going to try to do this API call. If that succeeds, I'm going to return a success in case it fails. Well, there are different exceptions here why it could fail. One of them is uh, IO exception or unreachable host exception. Let's just use a generic one here just to explain the idea. If that fails, now I have to return an error. I think I know why this problem is occurring is because the name result is already used for other things. So I'm going to rename this to API result or a, a sync result. Let's call it a sync result, a sync result. Easier to fix this. Yeah, a sync result. And here, a sync result. Okay, now it should be fine yeah here in in case of success i return success and what i was returning before in case of error a sync error and now i have to handle that in the view model let's go to the view model and now whenever i do this api call here get product list now this product list as you can see is not a list of product anymore but is it is it is an async result so now what we have to do is to use the when to go through all the possibilities of this uh, of this result which could be two it could be either a success or an error so if it's a success we do what we were doing before and if it's an error then we show some kind of error state here for example you could create something specific uh, for different type of errors uh, but yeah let's make it simple here and just use uh, the simple state that we have which is product list view state dot error okay so we already have an error state okay and here I need to access data dot map. So in case of success, I still need to get the data. So instead of calling this product list, let's call it result. So very simple. It returns a result. This result could be either error or success. If it's error, we update the live data to show an error. And if it's success, we show the content we we're showing before. So let's run the app and see if it works now. Nice. As you can see, now uh, we are showing a simple uh, error state and the app is not crashing anymore. So that's good. So let's make a quick review about uh, how we implemented the error handling. First, we created the async result and the async result is actually going to be the class that is going to hold either an error or a success state. So if it's an error, you're going to pass the exception because you might want to use some kind of uh, error handling for different exceptions. And for success, we uh, simply pass the data and we're using the concepts of generics here because then you can also use this API call you can use this error handling not only for your uh, for a list of products for example but also for a product detail so you can do it like that the main concept here is a sync result and then you have to change your repository implementation because now you have to do the actual error handling, which is done here. And depending on the result, you can either emit a success or an error. So this is a very simple way of implementing error handling. It's very easy to test as well. So you can easily write unit tests for it. So as you can see, it's a pure uh, Kotlin class. Testing it is also very simple. If you have any questions about the content that I showed here, you can leave a comment and I'll do my best to answer that. And also the link for this project is in the description so you can check it out. And I'll also leave the name of the branch where you can see those changes that I just made right now. Thanks for watching and see you in the next video.